Hello and welcome. Python is a high-level interpreted programming language that is widely used for web development, data analysis, artificial intelligence, and scientific computing. It was first released in 1991 and has since become one of the most popular programming languages in the world. One of the main reasons for Python's popularity it is its, simpler, its simplicity and readability. Python code is easy to write and understand, making it a great choice for beginners and experienced programmers alike. It has a large and active community of users and developers who contribute to a wealth of libraries and frameworks that can be leveraged to build powerful applications. Python lessons typically cover the fundamentals of the language, including syntax, data types, and control structures. They may also include more advanced topics such as object-oriented programming, error handling, and working with modules and libraries. Whether you are a beginner looking to learn your first programming language or an experienced programmer looking to expand your skills, Python lessons can help you achieve your goals. By learning Python, you can gain valuable skills that can be applied to a wide range of fields and industries. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about how to install Python to our machines. In order to be able to uh, install it to our machine, you have to go to the website. So actually, this is the website, python.org. You will go to download tab and you will download that file. Once you download it, you will go to download folder where you downloaded it and you will double click on that file. Once you do double click on it, you will come to this window, you will choose add python.exe to path. Okay, once you click this, you will go to customize and installation, go to Nikist, then you will choose, for example, to install it for all users. And you will, for example, down here, you will, I am pref I prefer actually to install it to see directly, then I will install. Well, then it will go through the installation and what once it finish we will see what will happen i'm gonna pause the video then i will come back once it finish And here we already got it. Actually, now it's installed already on the computer. We'll go to CMD, command prompt. Then I will write the following command to make sure Python dash dash version. Now it will tell me actually which version you have in your machine right now installed to, you, to your machine right now. And you can, by that, you can write Python directly to your C, to your command prompt. Like, for example, if you, for example, if you want to write the first code using, using uh, Python, like, for example, hello world, hello world, then enter. So it will print out this hello world here on the screen. That was actually simply how to install the language itself in your machine to be able to write the code using Python and test it to your on your laptop or on your PC. See you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we will install IDE on the machine. IDE is integrated development environment ide is the text editor that will help you to when you write the code if you do any mistakes right when you're writing the code, python codes actually it will correct it it will help you a lot to um to write the code using python so let's go um what the one that i'm using here is visual studio code and in order to be able to install it you will co go here to the website visual studio code uh dot com visualstudio.com and you will go to download and you will download once you download it you will go to the file next 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 until you finish it's very simple and very straightforward 
then you will open it. <clears throat> Once you open it, actually, you will create a file. For example, new file, you will give it a name, for example, whatever. I created a new file called test.py, and .py is the extension of the Python file. Okay, then now I will write the first program for myself. Okay, print, open brackets, then you will write for, for example, hello world. And this is the first program, for example. Now I want to test. I want to test it. How can I test it? I will go to this arrow. I will click on it. It will print it out here in the terminal. Okay, that means our program is working fine without any problem. Okay, thank you for watching. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we will draw a shape. But actually, literally, I'm not drawing a shape. I just want to illustrate something behind it. Actually, I want to show you how the Python deal with the instructions. It has to be in a certain way. For example, from top to down. It will look for, it will look to the lines one by one, and it will print out whatever commands, whatever instructions you're gonna give it to, to it. So let's get started and see exactly how to write the print, okay? So I'm, I will create a new file, that file I'm gonna call it uh, like um, Python, sorry, I will write, I will call it Python training dot py, okay? Now I will save this here and I will start right, for example, print, I will open a uh, brown uh, brackets and I will copy this, control C, control C, and I will print it many times, like four times, for example, and I will come here down, I will make it like that, I will write this one space or two spaces then up here three spaces and up here like this and i will come from up with the following sorry be able to draw the shape okay you know what in here for example I will write line like this or draw right line like this underscore okay just shift and underscore so here actually Yes, exactly. So here also, backspace. This is actually the shape that I drew. If I test the print here, what will happen? What will what you will see? You will see that it print out a triangle. Okay. <clears throat> this shape actually is the one that we draw using Python. Now, the most important thing that if you, for example, make cut to the last one and you put it here for example control v then you will test again what will happen see the shape is completely different right now why because actually python went to the top of the instructions the lines that you wrote it will go it it will go through it one by one it will go to the first line and it will print it it will go to the second line and it will print it it will go to the third line and it will print it, okay? 
even if I control exit and for example I put it on top the first one control V and here for example I write print hello what will happen here see it came to the line by line from top to down and this is exactly this is a goal that behind this video I wanted to show you exactly how the Python is gonna deal with the instructions okay thank you for watching hello and welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about variables variable is a container container where we store data inside of it and we use the variable again and again inside my code so the variable itself is very useful so let's go to Visual Studio and see exactly how I use variable and how the, the value of the variable is very uh, useful in our case here, actually, I have a story, a story, short story, and this story has name and age. Okay, let's say, for example, it, you want to change the um, character name and the character age uh, in all through all the story, and you want to do this uh, process many times, not only one time. So, how you will use it? Okay, if you if manually actually what you're gonna do is you will go to the character name and you will change it to any name you you need. Okay, right? For example, like this. This is actually the manual, the manual, uh, the manual way. Okay. But what I need actually, I want to do it through um, Python. Okay. How can I use it? In this case, actually, the variable is very important, and it's very it's gonna sim simplify everything for me. So the first thing, actually, I'm gonna create two variables. The first variable is character. Character, I would call it character name. Character, for example, underscore name. This is equal, uh, for example, the, any name that you need to like for example instead of Ahmed I'm gonna put Walid okay this is the first variable and the second variable is character I'm sorry character underscore h is equal for example let's say 30 okay so in this case actually no need to go to the line by line and change whatever you want in this case actually how can i fulfill it i will come here i will put f then once you put f here you will remove the character and you will open a curl presses and you will put the character name the variable that we created actually this is for the first time job only you will go to the lines and you will put the variables like this okay same way you will put if in here and you will open curl presses and inside curl presses you will put character age because this is actually the character age here he is really name or ahmad here actually we are going to put curl presses and we'll put uh, don't forget to put F in here, F, and I'll put character name again, and I'll put F in here, and I'll put the character age again between characters, character age. So now let me clear this. Clear. Okay. Now I will run the uh, code and I will see how can we change the name and the age did you see this actually there once there there once was a man named walid which is the, the character name and he was 30 years old he really liked the name walid but he didn't like being 30. okay this is actually the power of using um, variables 
okay uh, we in next videos we'll go through the types of variables one by one because actually this variable has types for example uh, this one is a string okay there is another type called integer integer if there is a name okay, if there is a number sorry integer if there is a number okay uh, uh, the number is actually you can use a, a decimal or any number here okay this is another type of variable another type is boolean boolean for example if you write is underscore male okay here the answer is gonna be it's gonna be true or false true and is male is underscore male equal for example false okay so this actually this we call it boolean 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 variable okay so we'll go in next videos we'll go through one by one and illustrate the use of each one okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello and welcome this tutorial we are going to talk about string when you hear a string, that means we are going to deal with text. Okay, how can we will show you exactly how we will deal with text? Here, for example, PMW. It's a phrase, okay, or it's a text. If I print it out, it will print me to print out the PMW car out here. Okay, so now let's, for example, I want to store this text or this phrase inside a variable. I will write phrase phrase then equal for example pmw okay now it became very simple right now it to, to directly, directly print, print phrase instead of print instead of writing the text every time so let me comment out this one control for the slash then I will test it, it will give me the same result. Okay, so now I stored inside a string variable, I stored this, this text, text BMW car. Now I can use some, something called function, or before I use it, I want to show you something else here. I will go back to that text. Okay, I will turn this back and I will comment comment this out control for the slash it will comment it out then i want to show you here for example if i want let's say for example if i want to uh, print bmw in one line and car in another line what, what how can we do it i will write here backslash then n in here then i will test it what will happen it's printed bmw in one line and in the second line it will print car. This is for n. Let me comment it out again. Control for the slash, and I will go back to these two. Control for the slash, it will comment it out again. So here, uh, actually, what we will do the next is I will use some functions, okay, on that variable, and these functions is gonna make change on that variable so what is a function it's a little block of code okay when it runs it performs a specific operation for us okay this is actually the definition of function i need you to know for time being actually let's see exactly the first function that i will use with this variable control x and I'll put it here, control V. What will happen? And I will remove this comment. What will happen here? If I use this function, function called lower. Okay. And this is the way how we call the functions. Okay. So let's print phrase. Okay. And dot lower, the function that I called. Okay. What will happen here? It will change to lowercase. Let's print it and see exactly what will happen but before i print it i want to commit this out comment it and here i will run what will happen you know what let me clear this 
and we'll come here phrase phrase uh, and you know what okay I will remove this then I will go up it's much better now I don't want this one let's see what will happen see here see here actually it it changed the um, the phrase from upper cases to lower cases as in here okay let's take another let's comment this out and use another function which is upper and instead of now lower I will cut and I will put it in here control V what will happen in this case actually and I want, for example, PM, I will write in this way, PM and car. And let's see exactly what is the impact of using dot upper as a function. What will happen? It will change it to upper cases. This is actually the second function that I need you to know. It's important as well. <coughs> All of this will be important when, important when, for example, you deal with texts. If you have a script, a big script, for example, or you have a big bunch of uh, texts, okay, like a book, for example, and you want to change uh, uh, change something inside it, these functions is going to be very useful, okay? I will comment this out. I will use another method, okay? uh-huh this method actually this method which is a boolean boolean what do you, what do i mean by it for example control v this one phrase is upper here actually is gonna ask is this the uh, text inside that variable it is upper cases or no so what do you expect the result when i print it what will happen i will clear this first okay now I will run this oh it said false why it say false because there are some lower cases if I change it pmw and here for example car what will happen in this case actually if I run it it will tell me that this is true because all of them are upper cases okay but what if I Keep it, keep it like this, PMW, and in here I will write car. Then what will, what will, what I'm gonna do actually? I will do. I can use two functions at the same time. So I will write um, upper. So it will change. It will, it will change it to upper. Then I will use is upper. What that mean? Here it will go to the phrase. It will go to here. It will change all characters to upper character. Then it will give me boolean result. What, which whether this is this is true or false. Okay, is upper true or false? Okay. Now I will run this one. I will find it's giving me the true. It's giving me true because actually it's the first step it did. It changed it to upper. Then it changed to uh, change it to upper cases. Then it give me the result of the, whether it is true or false. Okay. What is other method that can I use here? Print phrase upper. This is we. Yeah. And we finish this. Another method is the length. This is very important. The length. Okay. What is actually length function do for me? Let's see. Let's test it. Let me comment this out again. And down here, control V. And I will use the length or len, len function. Len function is going to give me the length of the text here. Okay. For example, one, two, three four five six okay so the length of text here or the length of this variable is going to be six okay let's see let's see for example what is the result if i print the length of this variable 
Ah, seven. Why it's seven? <coughs> Why it's seven? Someone can tell me? Okay. Because the space is considered as character. Okay. So it will, it will again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly. So the spaces here is considered. Okay. This is for the length. I have another another one here, another function here called phrase and the control x. Let me comment this out. Okay. Let me comment this out also. And I will write in here print phrase. Okay, what this will have, what this will do for me actually, if I write in it in this way, for example, I will print out. Haha. -ha. See, if you if you notice here, this is actually the index. This is the index. Index. What is index actually? Because here this text has how many index? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven indexes, but. The indexes always start with zero. Zero in, in the language itself, the index is starting with zero. So if I come here, okay, I calculate it. B is zero. M is one. W is two. The space is three. C is four. A is five. R is six. Right? Exactly. So let's change, for example, this index and I put index, for example, the last one, six. What will happen here? It will. I'm sorry. I have to comment this, comment this. So it will. Yes, exactly. Again, it will tell me that the index six is R, is letter R. Exactly. Okay. Let's change, for example, it to I want four. For example, it will give me C. Exactly. This is another function. Let's go to other functions as well. Function like this one. Let me comment this and I will Control V here. Now this one is print phrase, print phrase dot index A I till to uh, I will I want to search for one character exactly. I want to know the number of index of this character. Like for example, in here actually I'm asking the character A or letter A, what is the number of index of letter A? If I run it, what will happen? What do you expect it to happen? It give me not found. Why it's not found? Because actually here is a capital A, but we are having lower, lower A, so it's case sensitive. So I will put A, a small A, and I will run again. It will tell me that this is index five. Exactly, it's index five, okay? Very good. I will comment this out. I'll go back again. I will use, for example, print phrase dot index. This is what will happen if I use this one. Let's see. Here, print phrase dot index. R. Do we have R here? No, we don't have R. So I will write small, small letter. Um, print phrase dot index. What happened here? Actually, it's the same. Actually, it's giving me the same. You know, phrase dot index. A. Same like we used in here. It's the same function. Okay. So this is giving me the index this is actually is going to so it's going to print me the the letter in this index index 
zero, uh, 4 and this is will give me the number of index the number of index okay the number of index so let's go back and see exactly which other methods that can we use here print phrase dot index car yeah you can use it also to okay control x identify chunk not only one letter okay but number of letters for example let's for example but i want to change it to car to give me the exact result i will print it what happened here it give me four what is that because it's gonna give me the start of it here the start of it starting from four okay give me here down give me four okay then I will go back again phrase index w okay print phrase replaced now yeah this is important as well control let cut it and put it in here This one, I let me, let me comment this out. This method, this function, uh, replace function, is to replace something with something else. Like in here, let's see, for example. Okay, let me clear out this one. And I will run it again. This one, this function, it replaced BMW with GMC. But I have an issue because this actually is not exactly written the same, so I will change it back so i will test it see here it's changing bmw with gmc okay that was uh, the function of replacing that was a lesson of today and see you next lesson thank you for watching hello welcome in this tutorial we will work with numbers numbers or integers it's actually Python is amazing actually is using numbers in using numbers so let's go to our visual studio and see exactly how we will deal with number so for example let's say that you want print in a number number two for example and print it what will happen it will print it okay let me clear out here this one okay again print this is actually a number we can print decimal as well so uh, dot 0255 for example and print it okay yes it will print it for me what else print negative number negative number for example minus 2 yes minus 2 it's negative okay what else uh, subtract for example subtract let's say for example I want to subtract 5 minus 3 and see the result 2 okay if you see here the result 2 let me clear this one and what else subtraction there is addition as well you will put plus what will happen here it will give me the total of it okay uh, subtraction addition what about multiplication so multiplication also is working okay this one more thing another thing is the multiplication the print to this one actually if I have a little bit complicated things like for example 3 multiply 4 plus 5 what do you guys expect it will happen here okay let me print out what will happen it gives me 17 okay why because the multiplication happened first so 3 4 is 12 12 plus 5 that means 17 so multiplication is always happen first but actually what I need actually I need to the uh, addition happen first then the multiplication happen later so you can do it like this you will put this between two 
uh, round uh, brackets. Okay, exactly. I will remove this. Then I will test. What will happen here? It give, it's giving me, in this case, it's giving me 27. Why it's giving me 27? So 3 multiply by 4 plus 5. 4, 5 is 9. So 3 multiply 3, it's 27. So run it again, it will give me 27. So put in your mind always multiplication is have a first and the, the addition. If you need the addition to happen, you have to put it in between between round, round practice. Okay. Uh, the subject is actually after that is modulus. We'll talk about modulus. What is modulus actually? The remainder. The re remainder. You remember the rem remainder? So if I put a 10 and percentage 3 and oh, voila, it's giving me 1. Why? Because actually when you divide 10 on a multi uh, divide 10 on 3 it's giving me 3 3 by 3 is 9 and the remainder is 1 okay so this is exactly the remainder okay we can put the number in a container or variable yes I can put it it's called in this case an integer so for example if I put for example uh, my number my num is equal for example 5 that's awesome so my number now is 5 my number is 5 I want to print it out I want to print it out so print okay print open uh, run practice uh, parentheses and my num my num okay so print it what will happen here it's giving me 5 okay let me clear again here what else guys we can do it with numbers print okay very good that's very important and you have to put in consideration let's say for example i want to say um my favorite sorry my favorite number is then I close this, okay? Then I concatenate this with my num. What will happen in this case? Do you, what do you expect, guys? If I let me make this capital, let's for example, this maybe there is e here. I don't know. So okay, what happened here? Say what? Can only concatenate string, not integer to string. Wow. Concatenate string, not integer. Because actually I have integer here. And you can connect, concatenate it with string. And this is actually the language is considered as error. Okay. So this is an error. So how can we correct it? How can we correct it? In order to be able to correct it, there's a function called str. Okay. So it will convert any integer to string. Now let's print it. Okay, let me clear. Clear. And let's test. My favorite number is 5. My favorite number is 5. Now it doesn't give me any error. Why? Because I converted first to string, then I added or concatenated it. Okay, that's really important, and you have to consider it when you write your code. Okay. Mm. What is this observation? You cannot concatenate string with integer. You have to convert the integer into string. Then you can, in this case, you can concatenate both. What else we have for numbers? Okay, let's use another functions to see exactly. Let's uh, remove this and put for for example minus. What if I want print P O W of my num? 
what will happen in this case? You guys, what will you know? You know, guys. I'm sorry. It's not like this. Yes, it's print. Yes, exactly. This is uh, apps. Sorry, not power. Ifs. Uh, this will give me the absolute number of minus 5. See, if you run it, it will give you 5. So the absolute number of minus 5 is 5. Okay. What if I want to uh, use other functions with numbers? Yes, we can do. We can, for example, use... Okay, let me remove all of this. For example, I want print open power p o w let's say for example three and two what will happen in this case it will give me nine why because it three part two is nine okay it raises three into two it raises three into two what else we have guys here Uh, yes, yes, one of the most important one also is, let's say for example I want to use max. What is max? Max 2 or 5 and 10. What is that maximum number? Is 10. Okay, let's say for example I want to use min, minimum. Minimum number is 5. Okay, this is for the maximum and minimum what about let's say for example if i use decimal number 5.2 and i want to what i want to do here i want to round round it round and enter it will give me five y because it will round it to that smallest because actually it's close to that Five, so it will round it to five. What if I put seven in here? What will happen? It will give me six because it's close to six. Okay, five point seven is close to six. So it will give me the yeah, which number it's close to, it's, and and it will give it to me. Okay, this is actually round. Can I? Import external codes. Yes. How can I import external co external codes? Importing external codes into my uh, file. How can I do this? I will write from math and uh, math. This math is is gonna be like a library. Or Piltin. Okay. Module. Piltin module in Python. Math. When you bring it you will bring codes into your code okay so math is a built-in module inside you inside python when you import it you will import other codes as well to your file so from math you want what you want to import import everything i will tell him import import then asterisk means any okay now uh what i want to do when i bring other codes to my file i want for example make print and open uh, round or uh, 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 presses round presses or parentheses print what actually i want to print floor for example floor yeah floor what floor of um Floor of, for example, three point point seven. What will happen here? It will give me three. Why? What is the floor of? What is the floor of three point seven? Yeah, it will give me three guys. Okay. What if I want to see? This is for the floor. We want for the seal. Seal or C E I L. Seal. Enter, it will give me four. So seal will give me the, the, the most, the bigger, the, the, where it's close to. 
the bigger the seal okay and floor is giving me the lower okay the closest lower what if I want square around what if I want square square around something so is qrt is very good function and I will use for example 36 36 what is actually the square around this one clear then run it it will give me six that's really awesome that's all about number today guys and see you next video hello and welcome in this tutorial we will talk about input how we input data to python or to the computer using python so let's go here and see exactly how we will input data um, actually first i will for example create a first name i will create a variable okay and i will ask anyone about his name his first name for example i will tell him please enter your first name enter your first your first name okay what will happen if i run this uh, code if you notice down here it asked me about the first name so enter your name so i will say for example my name what happened here it gave me nothing because actually i didn't complete anything but if i <clears throat> came in blue down and I say print for example uh, but don't forget that if and hello and curl braces and in between here I will put the variable string value that I created okay in this case actually what i did i print here f hello if is i bring if here because i want to put a the variable with with the print okay so it will deal it it will deal with it uh, anything it will deal with anything between this uh, care, bra care brackets as as a variable in this case, actually, what will happen if I run my uh, my program? It will ask me first about my name. I will put my name. It will came with this is the input and this is the output right here. It says hello Willie. This is actually input. This is the way how we input things to <coughs> input things to what to uh, to the computer using Python. Fine. Thank you and see you in the next video. Hello, welcome to this school. In this tutorial, we're going to create a basic calculator. So let's go and see exactly how we create a basic calculator on Python. I will clear here. And if we go up here, now we will start to create a very basic calculator. Uh, let's say, for example, line one, I need the user to enter number okay the first one the first number and i will ask the user to enter enter number okay this is for number one number two num I will create another variable called num num2 and it's the same like num1 I will ask the user to input num enter number okay Now I, I will ask the user to enter two numbers. Let's run it. The first 
question into number I will write for example here sorry I will write here number 10 then it will ask me again about the another number and the result is nothing because actually till now actually I didn't use these variables okay I just created the variables now how I use these variables I will print use print function to num1 plus plus num2 <coughs> What will happen? What will happen actually if I um, if I make it like this? What do you, what do you expect actually the, the output is going to be like? So let's say let's see actually. This is a big mistake actually, but let's see what is the output. See the output how it will 10 20. It will give me 10 20 because it actually it's go to print number one and it will print number two beside it okay but this is not what we need exactly so what i'm gonna do i will create the sum which is the the total of okay the total of calculation number one and number two our or addition of number one and number two so num one so sum is equal num one is equal num1 plus num2 okay and in here after Python will calculate uh, it will add num1 to num2 in this at it will and it will store it in this variable it will print this variable now this is the correct way to do it 10 plus 20 it will again Ah, because here I have to control S save let me clear here again num1 is 10 num2 is 20 another problem guys I need you to be careful when you I need you to be careful actually when you uh, and put in, in in consideration by the way when we ask the user to enter a number actually the user entered a number but python considers this number as what as string okay as string so it when the user enter for example 10 here it's gonna be seen as a text as a text as a string and when the user again into the second number the language itself considers this as also as what as string so in order to make it correctly we need to use this function to not this function sorry this function integer so i want to convert whatever input by the user i want to convert it to what to integer okay let's see after that what will happen clear and now 10 20 now we are we got the correct result because what we did actually when the user entered the first number okay the first first number came here for example 10 so it will see this function integer integer will convert it to number okay because in here it's gonna be a string then it will be con con converted to integer then the second number will be str string the second input will be, str uh, will be string and it will come here the integer will convert it to integers to number then it will give me the sum which is the addition of the two numbers in this case actually we got we got it correctly fine that was a very basic calculator Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. Actually, we created uh, the calculator last video and we were, we already uh, tested and uh, actually it gave us the um, accurate result. But actually, let us think about the 
uh, let's let us think a little bit about the input of the user. Let's, for example, imagine that user entered. I will test it again. For example, he entered in his tier of number. He put decimal. For example. This is the first number for me, and the second number is 20. What, what will happen in this case? It will give us a, an error. That error actually invalid literal for integer with base 10, 10.235. So invalid literal for integer. Yes, because I really, integer here is converting to decimal, or uh, sorry, it's converting to number, okay? But the best way is to do it or to avoid all these problems. We can use this um, function instead of integer. I can use flute. What a flute will do, what flute will do, okay? Now I can run the program. Let me clear it here. And I will run the program. Let's say, for example, I will put decimal then. What will happen in this case? It will work with it very smoothly without any problem. This is how, guys, you have to think about or you have to consider all, all possibilities or all expectations. You have to put yourself in the place of the user, okay, in order to be able to solve your problems and to avoid making mistakes. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about lists. This is used to store a bunch of different data values, which are organized in a list to keep track of them easier. So, more clarification. Actually, let's go to our IDE and see exactly how we will deal with lists. For example, I'm going to write this variable friends and I will make a list this is actually the shape how to make a list okay between brackets then what you're gonna do you will fill these brackets with different types of data for example I will write I will write text I will write number I will write, for example, boolean false. Okay. <clears throat> now I can do what I can print print and see what will happen. It print me a list of data, a list of data. This data actually is. A variety of data text number false which is boolean boolean okay this is actually the list okay then after that if I want to see the indexes here as we agreed that any data is having indexes right so the index as we agreed is starting with zero in python right so for example ahmed is index zero 20 is index one false is index two so zero one two let's say that i want to print the data that is in an in index zero for example for example what 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 i'm gonna do in this case okay <clears throat> i will do the following see uh for example print let me delete this one print for example friends and I will choose which index actually I need to print it. Print index zero, for example. Then I will run it. It will give me Ahmed, which is in index zero. Okay. But if I use two, 
What will happen in this case? It will give me false. Okay, and so on. This is actually how to print the index that in the list. Okay? So, what else we can do in here? Let's, for example, use instead of two, I will use minus one. What will happen here? Let me clear here clear up here clear clear this these things and I will run again the script or I will run the program again what will happen it will bring from the back or from the, from the last the last uh, data or the last thing in the, the last thing exists in the list and it will print it out okay what if I put minus two okay in this case okay it will print me 20 what if I put minus three what will happen in this case, it will print what? It will print Ahmed, the first one, and so on and so forth. Okay? What if I want, for example, um, to... If I make it like this, for example, from one to the last. This means from index one to the last. Let's see, actually, what will happen. Aha, uh -huh. it printed what? It printed 20 and false because it started from index 1, 0, 1, 2, uh, till the end. Let's, for example, add something else like Sarah and Rami. And I will start it again. What happened here? It chose from index 1 up to the end of the list okay what if i specify here a number like for example i need it from one two three for example three what will happen here it will print me ha ha what happened it printed out 20 and false but it didn't it didn't actually it didn't print out Sarah and I expected that it will make it like this one two three but actually what happened it printed zero one two yes exactly three two indexes okay it printed two indexes fine what if I need Sarah? I will put four. Print it will print print all from twenty up to Sarah in this case. Okay. That was exactly the list. Okay, how we write it and how we calculate the index. Okay. Yes, exactly. What if I want the last thing I want to talk about here? What if I want to modify, for example, I want to modify something inside the list? How can, is there a way to modify without going here and modify something? Yeah. We can make like this. Friends, sorry, friends, friends, and we will choose the index. For example, index is 0, 1, 2, 3, for example, and I will replace it with for example, I will replace it with, uh, let's say, for example, Hiba, H E B A. And in this case, I'll print, print, I'll print, friends. Yeah. Let's test it. What happened here, guys? 
it's clear and I will run it one more time it the program it came from the first line okay it's so actually in the list the second line saying that that I won't replace index 3 0 1 2 3 which is Sara with HIPAA and print it again what will happen it print the list Ahmed 20 holes and it replaced Sara okay and it used HIPAA instead and it completed Rami and it finished the program actually that was all about the list and we will continue talking about list in the next videos thank you for watching and see you hello and welcome in this lesson we will talk about uh, lists part two in this lesson actually we are going to see if we use some functions with lists let's go to our ide and see exactly what will happen if we use some functions with the list okay in this part i'm gonna create two lists okay for example the first list is let's say lucky underscore name is it sorry For example, these are some names actually, and these are this is a list of names. Okay, in uh, this list, actually, I will create another list okay I will call it for example sorry a lucky name or we can say this is friends and I will create another list called lucky underscore number okay with for 10 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, yes, exactly. In this case, actually, these two lists, let's say, for example, if I want to merge this list together, okay, let's see how can I do it, okay? There is one function called extend, friends, friends dot extend friends dot extend and open this round brackets and write here the other name of the second add here the second name of the the other list or the second list what will happen here let's say for example i will print in this case i'll print friends just to check exactly what is the result of what, what we did right now, I will clear this and I will run. Did you notice that actually what happened? It merged or it extended the first list with the second one. So it they it merged the po both of them or both of the lists together. They put it in one list, in one big huge list. Okay, this is for extend. What else we have here? okay useful function the second useful function that we have is append okay let's say for example i want to add something to the list how can i do it let's test append so friends sorry friends dot append okay and i will append for example sarah what will happen in this case actually run what happened here? It appended the last item, Sarah, to the the list, list friends list. Okay, very good. Let me comment this. What else we have? Other functions that we useful functions that we have. We have insert. Okay, 
let's see for example friends friends dot insert not index but insert okay if I put insert okay what will happen in this case in this case actually I have to specify the index number the place that you want to insert the item in, in, in it for example let's say for example this is 0 1 2 3 okay let's say for example 0 1 2 okay I will insert it in 2 I will insert what I will insert for example Tom okay Tom what will happen in this case let's run it first let me clear this sorry clear and I will run it what happened here what did Ahmed Tom so zero one two zero one two so he inserted Tom in index two okay if you notice Ali was number two now Tom became number two okay so this is to insert something inside the list what else we have guys <clears throat> I have for example remove if remove if you want to remove something for example okay so friends friends dot remove I will remove some something what 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 you want to remove exactly I want to remove for example the third name for example the third name which is Ali a l r okay Ron, what happened here? He, he removed it, removed Ali from the list. Okay, this is to remove. Fine. What if I use clear? Clear. What will happen in this case? If I use, for example, friends, friends dot clear. What will happen in this case? Actually, it's gonna clear everything from the list. Let's run it now. It give me empty list. Give me empty list. <clears throat> what else we have? Pop. Yeah. Pop. If I write friends dot pop. What will happen in this case? Run it. What do you notice? It removed the last item from the list. Okay, this is popping. Okay, so extend, append, insert, remove, clear, pop. All these methods or functions are very good and very useful actually when you use it in your code. In your coding or programming using Python. What else we have, guys? Let's say, for example, for example, I want to know the index number of one of the items. For example, what, what, what can I do? I will write friends. The index. And for example, I will specify the item, for example. Okay, well it what it's gonna give me. Uh, let me clear I will have in this case actually just run it. Mm-hmm. Print friends dot index yeah now because this one is giving me information it's not doing any change so what what should we do in this case guys we should print it out in order to be able to give me the result it doesn't make any change that's why so just run it it give me actually that the index of what it is zero exactly zero one two three fine <clears throat> uh, 
it doesn't do any change that's why the output was not there actually so i have to put put it inside print in order to see actually the output of this function here what else we have here print friends index and what if i for example want to print Okay, what if, for example, if I use the same one, but I will use it for anything that it's not there. Hello, for example. What will happen in this case? It will give me error. It will give me, it will say that value error, hello, is not exist. Okay. <clears throat> what else, guys, we have? print friends index and friend index print friend dot count yeah that's very good one actually see let's repeat something like uh, I will add one more alley here yes and in here actually I'm gonna do the following print print friends friends dot count and I will open this one I will write for example Ali okay I will clear down and I will run again what happened here so let me comment out this also comment out this also and I will run again what happened here is said that Ali is two times okay it has to it's repeated or it came inside the, the list two times okay that was about some functions when we use this function actually with lists it's gonna give us a very good result by the way Okay, what if I use, for example, sort, sort, okay, I want to sort it, for example, it's going to sort it using, for example, alphabetical sort, let me check, for example, if I, print, then friends, print friends dot short for example okay now I want to sort it I want to sort it sort the list what, ha what will happen here just print it gives me none it gives me none it why it's giving me none why it's giving me none actually because none friends dot sort print friends dot sort okay here actually it will not be used here so I will use another one or what we'll do what I will do I will remove this, then I will write like this. Ah, why it like this? Because actually it do change, it do change, it do some change. That's why you have to do it like this, you have to write it like this. You have to do the change, okay, then print it, then print it, okay. Now it actually, it uh, it ordered alphabetically the, the list here, as you see, capital A, 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 T, A, and W. Okay, so it considered the capital letters first, then it came with the small letters. In this case, actually, this is sort, okay? And even with the other one as well, 
I can do sort with lucky number. Lucky number dot sort. Okay. And I will print lucky number. And run it. It will. It will alpha, uh, sorry. It will. Uh, it will order it uh, in ascending way. 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. From 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 the lower to the higher. Okay. 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. What if I want to make like reverse? So reverse what will happen in this case okay i will i will try to what what, what i'm gonna do is i will write lucky number dot reverse 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 in this case actually what's gonna do <coughs> now let me clear this one and run this what happened here? So the code exactly goes to the list, which is lucky number. Okay. And the function, he called the function called sort. So it sorted it ascending in ascending way. Okay. In 20, 30, 40. And after that, it reversed it. Okay. So it came from the last one to the first one. 30, 30, 20, and 10. Okay? Very good. Just for example, I want to make some changes here. Okay? 20. Yeah, I want to run again. Exactly. I will get the same result. Okay? What if I want to copy a list to another variable? Yeah, we can do that. Yes, exactly. We can do that. First four. Let me comment this. And I will come here. I will write, for example, what should I do? I will write friends. 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 But I will write friends too. Friends two is equal friend one the copy. Okay. Yes. I'm so sorry. This is actually friends. Okay. And I will print in this case print friend 2 friend 2 friends 2 okay be clear here and print again what happened here guys so walid ahmed ali 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 tarq actually what happened it copied friends and added to friends 2 that was using some functions with lists and see actually how these functions are important and see how can we use it. Okay. Fine. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about split function and tuples. So, what is the split function? Let's see exactly what it's doing. Let's say, for example, I have like this variable called email, and this email actually has a con is containing a a text, for example, like Walid at gmail.com okay so this is let's say that i have this variable and this variable is string it, it has already text which is my mail for example what 
I want to do here? I want to print the domain. How can I print the domain alone? Okay, out of this. Very good. In this case, actually, I want to explain split function. Split function doing what? Let's do another. Let's do another. Let's do another uh, variable. Okay, call data. Okay, and I will write email dot split function. What, what, what will happen in this case? Okay, let's first print data. And let's see what will happen here. Oh, what happened actually is split, okay, may change the text here, changed it into what? Into list, as you see here. Okay, very good. But actually, what can we do else? In here, inside a split, okay, between the brackets, what you're going to do, you can write as exactly like this, okay, at. What will happen here? The split function is going to see this, okay, at sign, and it will split the text, okay, into items. Let's see exactly what would happen if I run this. See what it happened actually? It came to add, okay, it looks at add and it split it, split it the text into items and converted it into list. Okay. In this case actually what can we do? How can I print out the domain? Okay. What can I do? I can write, I can actually, actually now it's zero 01, index zero 01, if you remember the indexes. Okay, so Walid is index zero and the domain is index what? Index one. So if I write the, the index number in here, what will happen and run it again? Let me clear this first. Run. What happened here? Actually, it printed out the domain. The domain name which is gmail.com or the website name okay that was for the split actually it is small uh, small i'm giving you idea about it but you can use it later in a lot of uh, useful things okay let me commit comment it comment this out and what i'm gonna do else and here i'm gonna talk about tuples what tuples guys tuples is it is like a list, but actually what is the difference between between it and the list? Tuple is immutable. Immutable means that you cannot change anything inside it. For example, let's let's say for example, I have this variable and this variable okay has 10, 20. Okay. This is actually that tuples you cannot change anything like for example if you remember the methods or the functions that we used last video is a list for example uh, a function like leaf you can clear or a function like pop to uh, delete the last item in the list or uh, a function like for example insert you cannot use all these functions with uh, tuples because tuples is immutable you cannot change anything in it so let's print let's print for example deck and index yes exactly you can use index as well in here if you want to print one item from the tuple for example i'm gonna print index zero what will happen it will print this one because this is index zero and this is index one uh, so it is immutable you cannot change anything in it you can use it later yeah you can use it especially maybe if you are building a website and you want for example you don't need the user or uh, people to do any change for certain or particular uh, data so you can put it inside tuples thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to talk about functions
function is a collection of codes that perform a specific task. Number of codes that perform one thing or more than one thing, put them together. So you will put number of codes together, okay, and call them at any time you want, okay, as we are going to see right now. If we go to our IDE, okay, and see exactly how we'll deal with functions or how and how uh, we will see exactly how functions work. Let's say, for example, I want to create a function, say, hi, hi okay, or hi user, for example, okay. This is exactly the way how, how you write it. This is the way how you write it. Okay. Here, for example, I will write print. Mm. Hello, user. What will happen in this case, actually? Now, this is the shape of, or, or, or this is how we write function. Def and hi user is the name of the function function itself, and inside in here, as you notice, there is something called indentation. So, for example, this indentation is very important. That I mean, this indentation means that this part or this piece of code exactly is inside of the uh, function. Okay, so let's call it. So. In order to call it, let's say, for example, I have print something called top, okay? And in here, I will, in this place of my code or in this place of my program, actually what I'm going to do, I will call the function. How can I call it? I will write it, the name of the function, hi user, then... This is how you call it, and I will complete my, for example, I'm going to complete my code, okay, print, for example, bottom, okay. What will happen in this case if I run my, my code or my program, what will happen? Ha ha. What happened actually? Okay, there is a function, say, hi, user, okay, and inside of it, there is print, hello, user, okay. Here, I print top, print out a word or a text or a word called top. And here I call the function. I call the function. I invite I already. I need to use it in here and in this place of my program. So that's why I called it here. So hi user. Then what happened? It goes to the user function and it sees the program itself came here and see that you are calling the function hi user. It goes inside the function and they see that this function is print is printing hello user. It printed hello user, then it completed the code to the end. Okay, this is exactly how we write the function and how we call it. As you see here, it's a piece of code. Actually, here you can write anything you want. Okay, you can write any code you want. Okay. This is exactly the function, how we write it and how it, it works. One more thing here I want you to focus on, actually, is the parameters or the arguments. What do I mean by parameters or argument? I'm going to use the same function, for example, I, and I will put here, for example, a parameter called name and another parameter called age. I have two parameters here. What I'm going to do, actually, I write if here. And inside of here, what I'm going to do, I will say hello. Then I'll open curl, curl presses and I will write the first parameter. Okay. And hello. Hello, name. And I will say your age, for example. Your age is what? Another curve presses, and I will write the age, okay? Inside of here, space, and I will 
put an, the another argument or the another parameter. In this case, actually, what will happen here? If you want call the function, you have to fill it with the arguments or the parameters. What do I mean? So if I write hi, hi user, okay, in this case, if I write it in this, in, in this way, what will happen here? It gives, it gives me error immediately. It will ask us about the parameters, okay? Yeah, exactly. It gives me high user missing two required positional arguments. Okay, this is actually what I'm talking about: name and age. So in here, actually, what I have to do, I uh, instead of name, uh, I will say, for example, um, Ahmed, and age is going to be, for example, twenty. Okay, and I will print it. What will happen in this case? Hey, hello, Ahmed, your age is 20, right? What happened? I called the function, I put the name Ahmed and the age 20. So the function itself will put the argument here. Okay. Ahmed, which is a name, and 20, which is the age, for example. Okay. Let's change Ahmed to Tom, for example, and the age to, for example, 30. What happened in this case? If I run it, it will say, hello, Tom, your age 30. Okay. This is exactly the function parameters and how we use the function and how we call it in our program. Actually, to use a function is a way better. Okay. Because it will, for example, it will save a lot of a lot of time writing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of lines instead of writing a lot of lines many times or repeating yourself actually it's the function is you will write it one time and you can call it everywhere in your uh, program so that was for about the function we'll complete function in the next video thank you for watching and see you in the next video Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about function return. Okay, uh, we will see exactly how return is necessary when you write function. Let's go to our IDE and see exactly how we, how we write it. First of all, I'm gonna clear here and I will write a function. My function is gonna be cube, cube function. The name of the function is cube. Then I will put num here as argument. Okay, and inside of here, I will write for example num i want this function when i call it it gives me the cube of the number multiply by num three times okay final okay let's let's call this let's call this function for example how you are going to call it for example if i write a print print then i will print cube and open round brackets and i will write num what will happen in this case? I will write any number. In this case, you have to write, for example, 3. Okay, then I will run this program. What will happen in this case? It gives me none. What does it mean, actually? Here, the return, return parameter is very important. That function in this case is, is, will not work or it will not perform it, its job until you write the parameter return. Okay, in this case, let's run it again. What will happen? It's going to give me the cube of three. All right. You can do what, actually? You can say, for example, result. Result is equal to, um, for example, cube. Cube and open brackets, for example, put in a number here. And instead of writing the function and the number, you can write, you can print out the result. Okay. So it gives me 27. If I clear here, if I put another number here, for example, 2, it's going to give me the cube of 2. This is actually the importance of the return parameter inside the function. Without it, we cannot get the result okay 
Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about if statement. If statement Python is very uh, useful and it's really make our our code more smarter because actually, if statement we use it when if there is a certain condition. For example, uh, based on that condition, we'll take an action. Okay, let's go see our IDE exactly how we will work, how we will make it. Okay. In, in here, actually, what I'm going to do, actually, I will write, for example, uh, I will write two variables, for example, like is underscore hungry, if I'm hungry. Okay, it's equal, for example, true in this case. And um, is underscore at restaurant. equal true also <laughs> and in here actually I will write if statement if is underscore hungry what you should do in this case just print print I will I will eat. Okay. Okay. So let's run this and see exactly what will happen. What will happen? Because here, actually, the program see here that is hungry is state is true. If statement here is true, if is hungry, if I'm hungry, I will eat. Print. I will eat. What if I change this case actually to false? What will happen in this case? Print it. Is, is, is not printing anything. It's not giving giving us any output. But if I, for example, put else here, what is else doing? Else here actually will see the other state. Okay. What, what is the other state? This is the first state. Is hungry. The other state is false. It will see the other state, and on based on that state or based on that condition, it will take the the action print. Print, for example, um, I will or I won't eat. Okay, let's print this one. Let's see. I won't eat because actually he's here is false. What if I change it to, to, to change it to true again? What will happen in this case? Then I will run it. It gives me I will it because actually the first state or the first condition already taken case taken taken place. So okay, this is briefly how if and how we use if. Here, uh, for example, I want to make it more and uh, more complicated, or um, I can make it more efficient and more complicated. I can use the uh, like or or and or for example if is hungry well, let's first talk about and and but i want to delete here for example if is hungry if i am hungry and i am in the restaurant for example okay i'm at i'm at sorry i'm at the restaurant what will happen in this case here Okay, I will eat. Definitely, I will. Eat. If I'm hungry and is at restaurant, I will eat. Okay, so what if I run this program? It will give me, let me clear first this one. What would happen in this case? Actually, it give me the output because actually the first state is true and the second state is true as, as well, right? In this case, it gives me this. What if I, for example, want to use else here? Else. Okay, I will say. Or, you know what? Else. I can write, for example, else if. Else if. Else if here is going to give me another option. 
okay? Is hungry. <coughs> Elsif is hungry. And not is at restaurant. What will happen in this case actually? Print print wait to rich restaurant and eat okay what will happen in this case actually else if let's take another condition which is i am hungry and uh, at restaurant the second one is uh, is hungry is hungry and not is at restaurant i'm not at the restaurant okay what if i say else if one more time and say not hungry not is hungry and not at restaurant in this case print i I won't eat. Okay. Let me check exactly what will happen. I I will, I keep I will keep changing actually the condition here, and I will see the result of that on the if statement. Okay. The first one say that is hungry and adverstant. Both both should be true. So if I run it, it will give me the first one. Okay. So let's go to for example to the second one second one is hungry and the not is at restaurant is hungry means a true not at not at restaurant not at restaurant so restaurant here means false because i'm not at the, at the restaurants what will happen in this case one it will run wait to reach restaurant and eat so the second one will, will take place. The second, the second result. What if the if I want the third one, third one to be happened? Uh, else, not 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 as hungry and not at, as the, the restaurant. So both of them has to be false. Okay, false. And I will run it. It will give me the third. I won't eat. I won't eat. Okay. So as you see here, and means what? And the both conditions has to be exactly giving the uh, same result as I need. Okay, otherwise it will not work properly. Like for example, I will write in the end else for example print for example I don't know I don't I don't know okay okay for example let's for let's for example say that <coughs> uh, here actually the first one is true true okay but I will put here, for example, not. Also, what what if I ha what will happen here if I put true, and I put true true here, and I will run. But let me clear here first. Okay, and I will run this. Here I don't know why it happened here. Because actually, it goes to the first condition. It say that is hungry and not not at, not is at restaurant same like the second one actually okay here the first one should be true is hungry is true and the second one should be 
false to match each other right or wrong right, but it didn't match okay what about the second second one is like first one what about the third one third one is hungry is not hungry that means it's the first one should be false and the second one should be false as well but actually here true true so it didn't match anything here so it matched that last one okay I, it else means any other state than the the than the these states okay please go go ahead and fulfill that fulfill that okay this is how we use if and we use and what if i for example change it and with with or okay but let's first what i'm gonna do i will remove that okay and i'll put i'll put here i'll put and and i will remove not from here and i will put or here and i'll put or here what's happening in this case actually i need you to focus more on this if is hungry or is at restaurant so or means here one of the condition is enough actually to, to fulfill it so let's say for example the first one is true okay the second one is false okay what will happen that means I am hungry but I'm not at the restaurant okay print I will eat okay do you think that the first one will match or it will not match ha huh. I will eat the first one will match because here or is not like and or means one condition is enough for me to take to take the action okay if one condition is true directly take take the actions so whatever you're, you're going to change here the ri the rest of here the rest of the uh, the rest of the program or the code will not will not fulfill will not be applicable because actually always the first one will be matching because even I will tell you I will I will show you if you put true here for example okay what will happen print aha uh -huh, I will eat also because actually all the time it will match here because actually as I told you or is not like and or means uh, one of the condition is enough for me to 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 take the action what, what about if I put false false in this case false and the second one is false does it match anything here let's see if is hungry or is at the restaurant here the state actually is I'm not hungry I'm not at the restaurant so is hungry it will not match the first one what is hungry and not a, is at the, the, the restaurant so it will here it will match because actually you're using or so one of the condition is true for example i'm not at the restaurant yes i'm not at the restaurant false so it will print wait to reach restaurant let's fall let's run it yeah wait to reach restaurant and eat okay so now you know how you how you differentiate between or and and okay very good this is exactly uh, how we use f and uh, as you see it's really powerful and it's amazing and it will make your code more more smarter and you will use use it a lot in the future thank you for watching and see you next video Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to use comparison with if statement. Let's go to Visual Studio and see exactly how we create it. Actually, the first uh, thing, what I need actually, I have three numbers and I want to see what is the maximum or what is the max or what is the biggest number between these uh, three numbers. So I will create, for example, function, this function, I will name it max underscore num okay what will happen I will put num1 
and num2 and num3 for example num3 okay I will use here if statement inside the function I will write if if for example num1 is bigger than or equal num2 and and what and num1 is bigger or equal to num3 what you should do in this case return return num1 okay very good let's you okay let's use another elif okay elif elif what what is the second condition should i use here i will say num2 bigger than or equal num1 and num2 bigger than or equal num3 okay in this case return num return num2 right okay else do what actually else pre, uh, return 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 num3 right return num3 let's see exactly how we will call the function here I can it do it like this result results is equal max num okay and between brackets I will keep writing here for example 10 20 30 okay then I will print result print result okay <clears throat> okay are we clear here clear then I will run my program my program now is a function okay this function actually will look to the numbers I have three numbers for example and it will go to the second line <clears throat> So my function has arguments num1 num2 num3 and inside it inside of it what I'm writing I'm writing if a statement if num1 bigger than num2 or equal num2 and it's bigger and equal num3 please return num1 The second one or the second condition is num2 is bigger than 1 and 3 so return 2 else return number 3 because number 3 in this case will will be the biggest number okay and in here I put a variable and I put equal max number which is my function I call the function in here inside this variable and I put the numbers inside it so let's run it and see exactly what will happen it gives me 30 because 30 is the biggest one what if I put here 50 okay and run it it will give me the 50 which is the biggest okay what if I put here 100 it give me 100 because 100 is the biggest one here exactly how we compare things okay <clears throat> in else or in if statement okay thank you for watching and see you in this video hello welcome in this tutorial we are going to build a better calculator okay in this tutorial i'm going to use the power of if statement let's see exactly how we will use it to go to our IDE and write exactly our code here actually I'm going to create three variables the first variable is num1 okay and I will use input in here to ask the user to enter the first num num1 
Okay, num1. And mm, operation, okay, I will again ask the user to enter, enter, put in here, enter operation, okay. And the third variable, which is num2, and it will, I will ask the user also to Import, sorry, import, open, and enter num2, num2, okay? So let's test in here, what will happen, see what will happen. Here I ask the user to enter 10, and operation is multiply. And the second number, for example, 2, and the result is nothing, because actually I didn't do any action on that variables okay now i will take these variables and i will put in the blender and i need to calculate whatever user enter to to this this is my program i'm gonna do it i'm gonna i'm gonna create it from scratch okay very good so num1 and the operation and what if for example i run the program again and i will what i'm gonna do here I will write h instead of number. It will accept it, okay? And any operation, then I will write anything. It also will accept it. But I don't need it to run in this way, okay? What I need exactly to change this, to flute, okay? In order to change it to, uh, instead of you, the user, for example, to prevent the user to enter any string. Okay, because user can enter integer or string. So actually what I need, I need integer, okay? So I don't need even it, uh, a, 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 a number, okay? He may enter also a decimal, okay? In this case, I'm gonna use flute function is to convert the input of the user to flute, okay? Or to integer. All right, so I'm going to use here also to flute the input of the user to flute. Very good. So in this case, actually, what, what, what if I enter a letter? In this case, enter, it will give me error. So if I run the program again and I will put number, it will accept it, okay? and so on and so forth. Let me clear her. Now let's use our beautiful F, okay? <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is the first state if num1, sorry, let's say if num1, uh, sorry, sorry. Let's say, for example, if op is equal, and here equal is, uh, I have to write it two times, because I, two times means I match it exactly, okay? So if the operation is, for example, if the operation is, for example, addition, what will happen in this case, okay? I need you to pre to return, in this case, return num1, um, add it to num2, and give me the result of it, okay? <clears throat> but here, actually, one second is print sorry okay guys okay um i'm gonna use lf op is equal to for example minus what will happen in this case i will print num1 
minus num2. Okay, elif again, op is equal to multiply, for example, so print um, num1 multiply num2. Okay, this is for multiplication. What about elif? Again, LF, LF, mm, OP is equal to, sorry, is equal to division. Okay. Print <coughs> num1 and divide it with num2 okay okay and else um, print for example invalid op okay so let's try to run this program okay now it's asking me about the the, the, the first number so I will write for example Oh my god, couldn't convert. Okay, let's clear again and run the program again and see. Uh, sorry. 10. And the operation, for example, is to add. Okay. And num2 is, for example, 20. Enter. It gives me 30. Okay. Beautiful. So let's try it one more time. I will write, for example, 2 and multiply by 5 gives me 10. Okay, what if I write it again and I will write in here, for example, 10, enter and divide it into, for example, Two gives me five. Okay, now I will run it again and I will enter, for example, ten. Here I will write anything and I will enter twenty. It gives me invalid operation. Okay, and that was a little bit complicated and beautiful calculator using the beautiful F. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about dictionary. Dictionary is a way to store the data in a key value pairs. Like, for example, in here, I wrote one dictionary. What is that dictionary actually? Month conversions. My dictionary is month conversions. Once you call, this is actually what we're calling key, and this is ex exactly the value. So, key and value. This is how we write dictionary. But how we, if we, if I, if I want to print out or, or if I want to call data inside it from, from it, how can I do it exactly? I will write print, then I will open round brackets and I will write exactly this, the name, month, conversion, then I will open brackets, then I will call the key, okay, I will write the key itself. Now if I, if I print it, for example, AUG, which is August, actually the, va the value here is August, so if I run this, it will give me error, unexpected ending. Why? Because actually here I have to write in this way. So, so clear here. So we're trying it again. It gives me August. So what if I want to call any other key, the value of any other key? I will write, for example, in OV. Okay. If you write it, if you run it, it will give you November. So this is exactly how we call the value. Okay, of any key inside the, from in from the dictionary.
Okay, there is one function I want to to know it, which is get. Get exactly is giving the same result. Like if I want to get, for example, any value of any key from the dictionary, I can run it. It's gonna give me the same result. Okay. What if I, for example, put here any key which is not exist in the dictionary? What will happen in this case? Don, for example. He say none, none. Don is not there. Actually, it's not there. But I can do something else. I can exactly pass the the error or the message that I want to pass to uh, the user. Like for example, I will say not available not available. In this case, if I run this one, in this case, if I run this one, what will happen? It will say not available, not available, instead of none. That was about dictionary. Thank you and see you in this video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about while. While is a structure in Python that allows us to loop through and execute block of code multiple times. It's exactly like while plus condition, as long as this condition is valid, the loop will continue working. So let's go and see exactly how we write while and how we make benefit out of it. Out of it. So I will start try for example, variable, and this variable is equal one. Okay, and I will write while. While i is less than or equal okay this is exactly the condition that that the condition that is exactly the condition that I told you about this condition as long as it's available it's valid okay continue to what actually print I print 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 I okay and do what else I need you to do the following I equal i plus 1 okay what will happen in this case actually in this case i the first time is equal to 1 so what will happen here so while okay i which is 1 less than 10 or uh, less than 10 actually i is less than 10 so it's gonna print i it will print 1 then it will increase it will add 1 plus 1 equal 2. Okay, so it will increase i. Okay, it will increase 1 to i. So it will add 1 to i. So in this case, it will be 2. 2, it will, again, it will come here. 2 is less than 10. So it will print 2 and it will add 1 to 2. It will be 3. So let's go and so on. It will go on this until it reach to it become equal 10 okay when it become equal 10 okay it will print 10 then it if it exceed or it became bigger than or greater than 10 it, in this case actually our condition will uh, stop working and why will it stop working because actually the condition in this case the living is not less than or it isn't smaller than 10 okay so i will run my program but let me clear here and i will run this what happened here one two three four four up to ten then it stopped because actually this is exactly what i wrote this is a condition as long as i is less than or equal ten please print i and increase one to i uh, this one i can write it in another way I can write here plus equal one plus equal one that means let me see exactly yeah plus equal one I plus equal one that mean uh, increase one each time okay so again it, you will put the number here on in, in, in I instead of I and you will add one to it okay or you will add whatever 
here number whatever number here it will be added to to one okay run it it will give us the same result okay thank you for watching and see you next video hello and welcome this tutorial we're going to build a guessing game so let's go and start building a guessing game actually it's, it's gonna be a very simple guessing game but actually you will understand while and you will see the power of using while in your code so I will start for example I will write two variables the first variable is secret 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 key okay secret key is, key is gonna is, is gonna be like for example let's say coffee okay and this is actually the secret key what what else I'm gonna I'm gonna write here is another variable called for example uh, guess okay guess is equal to empty um, empty empty variable actually I'm gonna start it with empty variable here is why I'll write a while okay while is secret key sorry or guess while guess is unequal unequal you write it in this way unequal to secret key okay what you should do here it, actually what I'm what I'm saying is when or while the guess is unequal secret key do what okay ask the user in this case guess okay is equal to input I will ask the user to enter the word again again and again enter the word okay he will enter the word again okay and this is exactly what I'm gonna do and out in here out of the while print okay print congrats you you won okay here exactly actually what I'm going to do <coughs> what will happen in this case uh, actually while guess so the user will enter a word here for example he he will enter t okay t is not equal to secret key because actually the secret key is coffee what will happen i will ask the user to guess again and put into the word until he it become until it become equal to secret key then i will print congrats you when so let's start our program and see exactly if, if it's gonna work or not let me clear here first then I will start the program enter the word I will enter the word here um, for example T okay ah enter the word again um, I will write for example bull Ah, enter again. I will write, for example, ho. Okay, I will write, for example, sky. Okay, until I write coffee, what will happen in this case? Coffee. Then enter. It says, congrats, you won. This is exactly the power of using while. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about four. For in language or in Python is used to iterate through something and giving us a specific result. <clears throat> for example, I'm gonna iterate through, for example, text. I'm gonna iterate through or loop through um, a list, or I'm gonna uh, iterate through dictionary. And give while I'm iterating through something, I will give specific things okay so let's get us started with it and see exactly how we write and how we use okay i will go to our ide and see exactly how we write it so i will write for 
for for for example for i in it's written in this way for i in what for i in for example um hello world okay what you should do just print i print i in this case what will happen i will run this it printed the letter okay we can write here instead of i i can write letter for example so for for letter in hello world print what happened print letter yes see exactly how it run and how it work i will clear here okay and i will I will run this. Okay, now you see hello world. It started to iterate or loop through hello and it will print the letters one by one. Okay, this is the first thing. Let's me let me um, comment comment this control for the slash and I will write another thing. Like for example, um I I, I have a list for example, I will call it the uh, friends okay I'll give it this name friends and friends is equal to list like for example Tom and here Tom Sarah For example, Ali. Okay, what should I do here? I will write for name in friends. For name in friends. Okay, print print name. Okay, print name. Okay, for name inference, so it will go inside the list. Okay, it will iterate inside it, it will loop inside it, and it will print me the names. Okay, one by one. So print, it exactly looped and it printed. Okay, clear. Let me comment this. Control for the slash. Another thing can we? Can, we can do here is arrange for example for i in range okay and range here is a function for example 10 what you should do print i print print i what, what's gonna do here it will iterate through 10 okay it will iterate 10 times and, and it, it will print the i so i equal to one zero one it will start with zero one two three four up to nine okay <clears throat> okay i'll print this one yes comment this and i will go back to this list again okay Control or control this, and I will do something. I want to use this list. What I want to do in this list actually is I want to know what is the length of this list. How can I know the length of this list in this way? Print and open round brackets, and here you will write lin and friends. What is the length? of uh, uh, list uh, friends okay then i will write i will uh, run the program it's a three because one two three this is actually the length of the list it has three items it has three items i will clear here okay sorry 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 clear okay actually this is actually the length of friends what sh can we do using length actually this is a function giving me the length of the list 
what what can I do? How how can I utilize it? Okay, in order to be able to utilize length and use for also the two together, so you can do one thing. You can say for for i n for i in what for i in and you write length of rings okay let's see let's see let's try <laughs> let's see what will happen print print i okay print i here i don't know exactly what will happen but let's see let's see run ah there is invalid syntax okay for i'm sorry for i n okay run again i want to clear this and i will run again what happened here but i want to comment this what will happen here actually here is saying integer object is not iterable as you see here okay uh, so what you should do you should say range and open this what will happen in this case actually here for i in range length of frames print i so let's clear here and see what will happen ha huh, zero one two so iterated two and it give me that zero one two three okay you can say for example uh, friends friends and let's try this and see what will happen i ah give me that same result okay for i in range okay for i in range of length of the friends okay so what will happen here it will iterate in this range the, the length of friends is three okay because it has three items so it will iterate three times and print the index of each item uh, of inside the list okay so this is exactly what happened in here so this is a, well, this is actually for and how we use it okay thank you for watching and see you next video Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about for. For in language or in Python is used to iterate through something and giving us a specific result. <clears throat> for example, I'm gonna iterate through, for example, text. I'm gonna iterate through or loop through um, a list, or I'm gonna uh, iterate through dictionary. And give while I'm iterating through something, I will give specific things okay so let's get us started with it and see exactly how we write and how we use okay i will go to our ide and see exactly how we write it so i will write for <clears throat> for 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 example for i in it's written in this way for i in what for i in for example um hello world okay what you should do just print i print i in this case what will happen i will run this it printed the letter okay we can write here instead of i i can write letter for example so for for letter in Hello world, print what uh, happened, print letter, yes, 
see exactly how it run and how it work i will clear here okay and i will i will run this okay now you see hello world it started to iterate or loop through hello and it will print the letters one by one okay this is the first thing let's me let me um, comment comment this control for the slash and i will write another thing like for example um i if i have a list for example i will call it uh, friends okay I'll give it this name friends and friends is equal to list like for example Tom and here Tom Sarah For example, Ali. Okay, what should I do here? I will write for name in friends for name in friends. Okay, print print name. Okay, print name. Okay, for name inference, so it will go inside the list. Okay, it will iterate inside it, it will loop inside it, and it will print me the names. Okay, one by one. So print, it exactly looped and it printed. Okay, clear. Let me comment this. Control for the slash. Another thing can we can we can do here is a range for example for i in range okay and range here is a function for example 10 what you should do print i print print i what, what's gonna do here it will iterate through 10 okay it will iterate 10 times and, and it, it will print the i so i equal to one zero one it will start with zero one two three four up to nine okay <clears throat> okay i'll print this one yes comment this and i will go back to this list again okay Control or control this and I will do something. I want to use this list. What I want to do in this list actually is I want to know what is the length of this list. How can I know the length of this list in this way? Print and open run brackets and here you write lin and friends. What is the length? of uh, uh, list uh, friends okay then i will write i will uh, run the program it's a three because one two three this is actually the length of the list it has three items it has three items i will clear here okay sorry 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 clear okay actually this is actually the length of friends what sh can we do using length actually this is a function giving me the length of the list what what can i do how how can i utilize it okay in order to be able to utilize length and use for also the two together so you can do one thing you can say for for i in for i in what for i in and you write length of friends okay let's see let's see let's try <laughs> let's see what will happen print print i okay print i here i don't know exactly what will happen but let's see let's see 
run ah there is invalid syntax okay for i'm sorry for i n okay run again i want to clear this and i will run again what happened here but i want to comment this what will happen here actually here is saying integer object is not iterable as you see here okay uh, so what you should do you should say range and open this what will happen in this case actually here for i in range length of frames print i so let's clear here and see what will happen ha huh, zero one two so iterated two and it give me that zero one two three okay you can say for example uh, friends friends and let's try this and see what will happen i ah give me that same result okay for i in range okay for i in range of length of the friends okay so what will happen here it will iterate in this range the length of friends is three okay because it has three items so it will iterate three times and print the index of each item uh, of inside the list okay so this is exactly what happened in here so this is a, well, this is actually for and how we use it okay thank you for watching and see you next video Hello, welcome. Uh, in this tutorial, we continue talking about four, and we will see um, how we use four in, uh, with dictionary and list. I have two examples here, and actually, I want to illustrate two things. Okay, for the first thing here is the dictionary. How can I loop, loop through, iterate through dictionary? I can write. I can write it in the following way first of all i want to uh, uh, talk with you or tell you about one uh, function which is items so yeah so items exactly for example let let us print okay what i'm going to print is prices prices dot items okay this is a function okay and let's see exactly what it's do or what it does here i will run the program here what happened actually it it, it converted it converted the dictionary into list so uh, prices dot items so it converted actually the dictionary into list as you see here dictionary item so item number one apple item number two item number three okay so okay in this case actually how can i iterate using this function okay very good so what i'm going to do i will print i will remove this now let's use four let's use four what i'm going to do actually i will use four and fraud for example fraud and fraud and what fraud and price because i have two things fraud and price okay for fraud and price okay in in what in prices prices dot items exactly now it will iterate through this but wait okay before it iterate in the dictionary it will convert it to list first then it will iterate through it now i will 
iterate through this list and I will what I'm going to do here I will print okay I will print what I will print open brackets then if then open this one and inside of here I will write <coughs> fruit fruit and and what fruit and price fruit and price in this case actually it it will convert the dictionary into list and it will iterate in the list actually and it will print the fruit and the price the key and the value the key and the value okay the key and the value so let's run this program see exactly what will happen run it again just let me clear this one okay here some mistakes okay sorry for that what I want to do here I want to remove this actually and I will put this one and I will put here yes here exactly how we will oh my god sorry control x I'll put it inside here control v yeah here we are yes exactly now I will run this I will run this okay again there is error what is the error I will clear again okay here you find if uh, two times why why okay I will run again now it printed me the key and the value the key and the value okay the key and the value so it converted first it converted the dictionary to list then it iterates through the list and it printed the key and the value <clears throat> okay this is a way if you want to print everything from inside it if you want to iterate inside a dictionary and you want a uh, print out uh, the key and the value inside for from the dictionary okay that's the first example I wanted to illustrate the second example is about a list so let me first yes I commented it then I will took in here uh, I will comment this also okay here actually what I'm gonna do is I want to deal with this list okay this I have a list okay and what I want to do actually is I want to print the index and the value the index and the value from these from this uh, list what I'm gonna do is I will write four then after that I will do I will write I and I wrote I and what I and fruit for example fraud okay in in fruits in fruits okay now I will ask it to but for I fraud for I fraud in fruits but before I write it in this way I will put in enumerate in you mirate okay enumerate and I will put this actually between this round brackets what enumerate do let's see control C then I will comment this then I will print
okay let's see exactly what enumerate do let's first clear this one then i will run this one enumerate object adds what happened here is it working or no okay enumerate fruits so for example let me first what happened here enumerate object at 0 x 0 0 actually what happened it enumerated this okay enumerated the index of each one of in here okay so okay I won't use this now okay okay I'll print I will comment this out then I will come back to here okay for I fraud in enumerate frauds okay what you should do is to print print what print open F then between this I will write I will write I and front I and front here I will write I and here I will write front okay and let's see exactly what will happen here aha uh -huh. so it printed out the index of each item inside V the index of each the index number of each item inside the list so for example apple is zero banana is one man mango is two zero one two so this is in case if you want to know the index of each item inside the inside of the list okay that was uh, for part two thank you for watching and see you in this video Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about four. And actually, I want to illustrate two things with, with, with four. I will use two things with four, which is break and continue. So uh, let's write, for example, four i in range. Okay. And this range actually is one from one to, for example, 11. Okay. I won't print sorry i want print i print print i in this case actually what will happen if i run the program it will print from 1 to 10 the index 0 1 2 3 4 5 so actually uh, it's it's reading from index 0 up to the last one so because it consider one as index 0 uh, so it will print so it iterates through the indexes okay this is actually one thing actually what I'm I want to do here exactly I want to uh, use pre if and break I want to use if statement if for example I equal to if I equal to five okay you should do what you should break okay I want to break the program okay so run it what happened actually here it iterated through this range and it started from one two three four five once it reached five because i became equal five it stopped in five so this actually it will break the program okay what if i want to use continue in this case continue so once you reach five i don't want to stop the program i want to continue in this case it will continue up to the end thank you for watching and see you next video hello welcome to this tutorial actually we are going to talk about the nested four and actually the list inside a list what if i have a list inside a list and i want to iterate and uh, iterate and uh, print the items inside these lists how can i do it I will write for 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 what for for example for row in number list number grid okay what will happen in this case actually this row okay one two three four five one two three four four rows 
And what I need actually, I can make nested four. So I can write another four inside the first four. So I will write another four and I will row, for example, in, sorry, colon, colon, in row. So it will iterate inside that number grid and it will print the each um, list okay row in number grade and colon this I would consider it as colon one two three colon one colon two colon three row please print print colon okay colon now I will run the program and see exactly what happened here but let me clear to make it run okay now it iterated so it's read the first time row the row is one two three the first row is one two three so and the colon inside this row one two three okay four five six seven eight nine and zero so this is exactly how we use nested for okay with complicated lists for example lists inside lists and i want to use nested for with it. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello welcome. In this tutorial we will build a translator. Actually I'm gonna translate from language to another language but actually the translation or the language that I I use here is a fake language actually. I will ask the user actually this is the idea of the uh, program itself. What I'm gonna do I will ask the user to enter any phrase or any word Okay, and I will remove or, or I will subst substitute or I will change the uh, vowel sound or the vowel letter with the a G letter. Okay, so let's go and see exactly what or how can we do this. Okay, so uh, first of all, I will create our main function which is going to be, which is this function I'm going to use to translate. Okay, so this is the main function, translate. Okay, then inside of here, inside of the uh, function itself, I will use parameter or argument called phrase. Okay, this function actually inside of it, I will make a variable called translation. Okay, trans translation and translation is equal to equal to empty uh, data okay and in here I will exactly start do uh, whatever I want okay what, what exactly I'm gonna do is I will make a for loop okay for for what for litter <coughs> in phrase okay phrase why I do this loop actually if for litter in phrase this is actually the phrase that I will ask the user to enter okay so once he enter my uh, function will do some functions on it okay what I need actually I would I want to make a loop I want to make a loop because I want my program to look to each character or each, each litter in the phrase and see exactly if there is any vowel litter please translate it into G litter, okay? So, in here, for litter in phrase, okay, here I will use if, if statement, if, if, litter, if litter in, in what? If litter in, A, I, O, U, Y, A, I, E O U Y A I E for example. Okay, now this is if statement if the letter is in this vowel or equal these vowels. Okay, what you would do actually? I want to do the following. I want to write translation is equal translation. Okay, plus plus what plus G. Okay, 
In this case, if it if, if the letter is A, okay, please remove A and put G. Okay. For example, I'll give you example. Um, like for example, school. Okay, school. Now my program it will look to S. S is not a vowel, is not here in this list. Okay, so it will put the S as is, okay? Because actually it will iterate, see? Here letter will iterate here. Okay. And it will write S. But okay, if G uh, sorry, sorry, it will go through each letter until it comes to O. Okay. O is in this list, so it will replace it with G. So it's gonna be S C H G G L. Exactly. This is what the, the new language that I want to translate to. Okay. But here, actually, I have to write else. Why I would write it? I will write it because I want to translation else. Translation is equal to translation plus what? Plus the letter. Okay plus litter exactly because actually this one is for uh, is for uh, normal letters not the vowel one okay and this one is for the vowel one okay very good so now I want to come here here I want to return translation okay and I will call the function now what I'm gonna do I will write print and inside of print I will call the function okay when I call the function translate translate inside of translate I will ask input from the user okay to input to enter to enter phrase okay Please enter phrase. Okay. Now I will run my program. Run it. Now it it asks me to enter in it any word. Like for example, what it? Okay. Ha ha. It translated the vowel letters to G. So it replaced vowel letters into G. <laughs> w A A is a vowel. L, it's not vowel, E, vowel, so it translated it to G, so G and D. This is actually how we build our translation uh, again. It showed here how to use a function, how to use a for loop, how to use if statement, how to use um, iteration and input. Okay, this actually the purpose behind this. Okay, so uh, this is the end of this video, but I will continue do some modification on this game. Okay, in the next video, thank you for watching and see you. Hello again. In this tutorial, actually, we'll continue uh, make some modification on our uh, translation game. Actually, what I'm gonna do, actually, I will. What if the user entered a capital vowel or smaller vowel? So I want capital vowel to be capital G and smaller vowel, small vowel to be small g. In this case, actually, what I'm going to do is very simple. I will write the uh, function again, which is translate. This is my main function, actually, translate. And I will ask for argument, which is phrase. OK. What would you do actually in, in this in this uh, here? I will ask for I will sorry I will create a translation translation variable. It's empty string and I will actually what I'm gonna do I will write the same for loop for letter in phrase okay for letter in phrase do what okay you have to iterate then after you iterate you will check if litter is if litter the lower in the following list a i e o u y for example please 
<coughs> do another thing if nested this is nested f okay <coughs> if letter do is upper okay okay now he will check if it's lower in this case in this list okay and if it is upper in this list so if it is upper do the fall okay translation is equal to is equal to translation plus g g but g capital in this case actually okay this is for here what about I will write else and I will write translation is equal to translation plus plus what plus G plus G in here actually what happened it will check the lower in this uh, list if it is lower and but before you check the, if it is lower just check if it is upper also in this list translated to g but uh, okay when you found it capital letter do it put it to g as g capital g then again see if it is lower put small g here actually how we use the nested f and what else here i will ask uh, in here i should write another list okay why for the capital letter okay so litter else translation is equal to translation plus letter okay and in here i will return translation then i will call our i will call the function and inside the function i will ask the user to input input what to input phrase to input enter a phrase see here print translate this should be okay what is the error translate translate let's run it gives me error so let's remove this one uh, i will remove this also translate input interface Space. Uh -huh. Print. Remove this inside of here. Control V. Why? Print. Translate. Input. This actually translate. And this is a translate. So. I will ask the user to input result is equal to <clears throat> oh one more yes and here i will print result it's gonna give me the same right i hope so okay so let's clear clear up here 
yes then i will run again i'll write play for example capital capital a y a small y enter ah again what happened in here if letter dot is upper and it hmm return shf put one more remove this let's test play it's not giving me the exact okay we can go back here actually we can see what is the issue here is upper if little dot lower in this list mm -hmm. translation equal translation plus g okay else translation equal translation plus g and then here return translation so i will run back again play mm, me control s run one more time no it's not working hello guys I found out the issue actually lower here is you have to use it like this I forgot to put the round brackets here so I will run the program again play I will put capital A for example I will run it will give me Sorry. Here. I will run more, one more time. Enter. Yeah, it gives me exactly P L G G. Okay, this is exactly what I need. Capital G it looks at the capital A. It replaced it with capital G and small Y with small G. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about try and accept. Try and accept is gonna give me the ability to deal with uh, errors. Okay, so errors in your code actually can cause a big issue. Why? Because you may have an error in one certain line or in different lines. This error exactly will stop the entire the entire program okay for example you uh, require the user for of of the program for example to enter uh, a value okay and this value is wrong okay if you don't if your program is not is doesn't have the capability to deal with this these errors this kind of errors it will stop the entire uh, program it will not continue the program so in this case actually we can handle we can handle the errors in this way i will you for i will i will write a very small program or code um i will i will ask the the user to enter number for example so i will put a variable called number okay and i need the user to okay input enter a number okay I'm asking the user now to enter a number okay and I will print this number print print number okay so I will test this one right now run it will ask me for a number I entered the number okay so it printed it out 
I will run it again, but in this time, I, I will not enter a number. I will enter a text, for example, HHHH. So it will give me error, value error. Okay. This is invalid literal for integer. Okay. So in this case, how can we, let's say, for example, now I have uh, other things actually, like uh, anything. If so the program has a completion here okay in this case actually the pr program will stop here okay will stop here in these lines it will it will not continue the other lines as well so in this case actually uh, how can we deal with this these errors it's actually very good way that we will use try okay we will use try but this has the, we have to use the indentation here also because this one will be under the try so uh, we will use try okay try okay and try and accept try and accept okay in this case actually i will give um to the program uh, di directions to the pr program or in instructions to the program please go through the lines okay if there is any error please accept error accept it so i'm telling that go through the lines then if there is any error accept it and print print for example this is Oh, sorry, this is not a number. This is not a number. Okay, this is my way to avoid the errors. Okay, so let's try it now. Now he asked me to enter a number. I will ask a ticket. I will enter a ticket. Ticket. Okay, I will. I will enter any text instead of number. What happened? This is not a number. So. It tried it, and if uh, when it found that there is error, it say print this is not a number. Okay, very good. But be careful because try and accept actually is accept accept is accepting anything under the sun. So, but I what we can do here actually we can deal with the specific errors with the specific errors. But first, let me show you for example. Okay. If there is another type of error, what will happen here? It will accept it. See here? It keeps saying this is not a number. See? This is not a number, okay? Because what happened? It come to the first line here. It said that it found that there is error, okay? It accepted it, okay? Because actually there is no division by zero, okay? But what can you do right now? I want to deal with, I want to remove this, and I want to remove this, and I want to remove this as well. Sorry, I want to remove this well as well. Now, let's try to do, to know the type of errors and deal with, with them. Okay, so I will run again. What happened here? I got two error. I got this error, zero, zero division error. Okay, very good. This is one type of error, which you cannot type by zero, right? Very good. So what can we do here? In this case, you can try. Okay. Fine. And you can accept. You can try and you can accept. Okay, but here the exception you can type zero division exception. Okay, and you can print here, for example, no division using no division on zero, for example. Okay. In this case, let's try our program and let me clear this one. I will run it. Okay, no division on zero. Okay, so it deal with the division. It deal with the specific 
error. Okay. Okay, no division on zero. Very good. This is to deal with that one. Okay. Um, okay, I will remove that one. Okay. Or, or I will comment. I will comment it. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I will run again. It will ask me. I will write tickest. Okay. Okay. In this case, it says that value error. Value error. Okay. I will remove zero division. I will put value error. Okay. Okay. Please enter a number. Okay, I will run this again. Text, it will say, please enter a number. So in this case, actually, we can deal with a specific error. Okay, specific error. Wait, we can do something else. Like what, for example? We can come here and we can say as as for example error okay what i did in this case i can store the error in a what in a variable and i can print it. print error okay so now let's try this i will clear this one what will happen just run it and enter in a ticket what happened invalid literal for integer was based in test okay here actually instead of giving the type of error it store the error message here in this variable and I printed it okay really good this is how we deal with the try and accept try and accept okay what if you what if you want the program to continue yes you can do the following sorry now I want make it in a proper way here what i'm going to do is i will accept and actually i will write because i know the type of error here zero as error or as anything and print error Fine, then I will continue. Try again. Okay. Except, for example, <coughs> it was value value error okay as text error for example or num, num error i say it num error print num error okay I want to run this program again. Let me clear this and see. It says that division pi zero, okay, the first one, and the second one, text, okay, it say invalid literal text, okay. That was the way how to handle the errors. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to uh, see exactly how 
uh, Python reads file. Okay, so we'll go to our IDE actually and we will create a file. We'll create a new file and this file I'll give it name fraud, for example, fraud <coughs> or frauds.txt. This file is, is going to be a text file because actually uh, Python is dealing with. Uh, all kinds of files that, that you can say that a lot a lot of different files like TKS, XML or whatever so you can uh, use for example this bring this text file to your program and you can put some functions on it or you can do uh, you can utilize it actually inside your uh, inside your program or inside your code so I created this one File frauds the text okay. It create I will create it in the same same place of uh, of our program. Actually, this is our program, okay. And I created it in the same place, which where in where it is in C actually C and Python folder, okay. So I will create a file now. I created the file. What should I do actually to be able to deal with it? Let me for first write some things inside this file. I will write, for example, mango because it's fruits, fruits prices, for example. So I will put mango equal to, for example, $10. Apple equal 15 or $15. Apple and banana, for example, equal to, for example, five dollar. This is only examples, okay? So Control S, I saved. Okay, now in order to bring this file into my program and deal with it, okay, this is how we can do it. You will write open as a function. This function will give you the ability to open a file. Okay, what is the name of this file? Is frauds, frauds, frauds dot txt dot txt. <clears throat> Actually, I put it in. Let's consider it as a text. So this is the file name, and he in here. Okay, the second thing I have to put whether it is write permission. Oh, sorry. Uh, whether it is read permission or write permission or a which is appending you can append it something uh, on in, in the last line of the text of, of the file okay or you can get r plus r plus means r plus means uh, read and write okay okay in this video i will put it as read only okay and see exactly what we, what we'll do Actually, here, what I'm going to do is I will go to my place of that one and I will, what I'm going to do, I will print the absolute path because I will deal in here with the absolute path. Okay. Okay. Copy and paste it like this. Then what I will do also is I will store it in a variable, okay? I will store it in a variable called file. Now I can do whatever I want on this file, okay? But first, what I want to make sure, I want to make sure exactly if this one is working or not. So this one has some texts inside it. I will print these texts. How can I print it? I will print then file then in here what you're going to do is read you can say read <coughs> so read okay read lines okay read lines for example let's see what will happen in this case just print haha it printed what inside it what it what is inside it okay what if i want to print line by line Okay, so I instead of lines, I will put line. So 
run it will print the first the first line which is mango okay if i repeat this again control c then control v again and again what will happen in this case just clear this and i will run this program again it read the first line the second line and the third line okay but what can we do actually uh, in order to avoid this uh, writing the code ag again and again so we, what, what we can do actually is we can do the following we can say <coughs> we can use for for line in file dot read lines right do what for line in file dot read lines i want you to print line okay just clear this one and run it now it goes iterated inside the file itself and it printed line all line, line by line okay the all lines very good that's another method or function we can use with files what if for example but here actually you have to uh, in instruct or you have to close the file after you you after you finish okay so file dot close okay you have to close the file after you finish so run it again it runs and it close after it close the file after it okay this is this is how we deal with files the read permission what if i want to see exactly if it is readable or not readable it is readable or not okay in this case what will happen what i'm gonna do here uh, i won't remove this I want to remove this okay and I'll come here and I'll print then I'll open round brackets okay and I will what I want to know exactly I want to see if it is readable or no so in this case I will write it like this and I will clear and I will run here what happened here it says true true means that it's readable what if I change read to write and run the program it's a false it's not readable okay be careful because when you change the permission here to write it, it deleted all the all that information inside the file okay so you have to be careful okay very good actually this is how we bring how we create and then how we uh, open the file and how we deal with it okay thank you for watching and see you in the next video hello welcome in this tutorial we're going to talk about write actually as we in the last video we actually deal with uh, we already talk about uh, read okay in this uh, uh, tutorial we are going to talk about write okay so let's go to our id and see exactly how we write on the file okay let me delete this one okay let me <coughs> here is a file it's an empty file okay i will create another file okay in order to be able to create another file you can create it manually like this or you can use the python itself to create a file so let's for example show you exactly how you use python to create a file so in here <coughs> what i'm going to do is i will say open okay and i will give it any name for example like employee okay i will create employee file uh txt and i will give i will give right permission this time okay very good 
But in here, actually, I will specify the absolute path. Okay. Copy and let's see exactly what would happen. Control V and folder slash. Here, actually, I will. Okay. I will run the program. What happened? If you go to the same place, actually, here, you will find that we created a file called employee. Okay. So if the file itself is not there, write is going to create one for me. Okay. If the file is not there in the place. Okay. But what if it is there? It will give me permission of writing. Okay. So this is what I wanted to show you. Here, now I created a file. What should I do here? Actually, <clears throat> I want to test. I want to write something. Okay. To it. Okay. Um, let me save it inside of one of the variables. Okay. What I'm going to do is I will say file dot dot write okay file dot write okay and I will write something here okay I will write for example Ahmed and his position is for example manager okay I will then I will close the file <coughs> file dot close okay then in here I will run the program and let's see exactly you know what let me close this and I will open file I will open it for you just to pf2 we open now as you see here that we wrote Ahmed and manager okay what if I want to write something else okay control control C, control V, for example, and I will write, for example, um, Tom, for example, is HR, HR manager, for example. Okay, and I will run it again. Let come, let's come here, and in here, actually, as you notice here, it came with in the same line. What if I want to separate them? Do you remember how we do it? You can write it in this way. Backslash n. Let's see if we can succeed. Yes. It came to the second line, but I don't need this space. So run again. It came here, Tom. Okay. What if I want to add another one? Control C, Control V, and I will write another name, for example, Sarah. Okay, is for example, Secretary. Okay, let's run this you will find that we created another line here. Okay, this is actually how you use write and how you use write permission. Okay, control A, control C. What if I want to append something here? I will give A and let's come here. What happened here? It appended another. See what happened? It say Ahmed Manager, Tom HR, and Sarah Secretary. And again, it appended another three lines. <laughs> you see that? Okay, very good. Appended to the bottom of the to the bottom of the uh, pro, uh, the file. Okay. Uh, I will change it to write again, and I will do what? I will run again. You notice what happened here. It overwrite it. It overwrite on the file. So it deleted all information inside the file and it wrote these three lines again. Did you see how the powerful of write in this case? Okay. What if I want to know the permission 
of the file itself. Okay, file write pull. Okay, I want to print it. Print here. In this case, one it will say true because it's it taking that write permission. Okay, that is was about write how to write. Okay, to the file. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello. Uh, in this video, actually, I will create a, a HTML file. Okay, I want to create another type of file like HTML. Okay, I created this HTEmployee.html and I will run again this program and I will see here I find myself that I created another employee.html file. What else can we do? In this, I can say, for example, file dot write. Sorry, dot write. Okay, and I will open practice. And in here, actually, what can I do? Actually, I can say I can write HTML code inside of it. So, like for example, h1. Okay, and I can close it. H1. But in here, actually, like this, and I will write any text inside of it, like for example, ht, HTML file is nice, for example. Okay, I will run, but before I run, I will file dot close. Okay, and I will run this. What happening here? If you go to the same place, if you open this, what your HTML file is nice. Okay, so this is exactly what we wrote inside. We can write HTML code inside of it. Okay, that's why we can see like this. Okay, that's for HTML. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about modules. Modules actually is amazing. Why? Because actually it makes our life easy. Because modules, when you use it actually, modules is considered a Python Python documents or Python files had, uh, that, that files has, uh, for example, codes. Okay, so you can use import these modules and use the codes and you can import the, the codes from these modules. As we are gonna see here, Actually, uh, let's see how we use modules. I'll create a manual module because, I, because actually you can find also open source uh, uh, modules that are called libraries. People did these libraries to make life easy, okay? And uh, you can import, you can install these libraries on your uh, PC or um, on, on your IDE. You, and the, later you can use uh, these like pyramids easily okay as we will see first of all i will create a light uh, module uh, okay it's manual module i'm, I'm going to create this just for demo i will do i will create a file okay new file and this file i'll call it module 2 or module 1 module 1 dot py okay i will create it uh, in here create that and inside of it i will create some functions okay like for example uh, adding num adding num in um num1 num2 actually this one is going to make what return return num1 plus num2 okay this is the first function the second function for example num2 if i'll create another function called call another function called for example subtract subtract num1 num2 okay and in here Sorry. Sorry. 
expand subtract return num1 num1 minus num2 okay I will create another function called def multiply for example multi multi num open num1 num2 and return num1 multiply by num2 okay yeah this actually control s actually here actually what i did i did a module one okay and inside of module one there are some functions here in this file i can do what i can inform from i can say from module one from module one import import what import everything okay that's just here means everything okay now what can i do i can print instead of doing everything from scratch i can print then open then add num for example add num and i will add 10 two nums here 10 and for example 11 okay here i will run the program it will tell me it will give me this output which is 21 actually 21 so 10 uh plus 11 21 because actually what what i did okay i imported this module i imported everything from this model to here to this file and i was able to use the functions that exist inside of this model one okay and use it here in this file that was for the model okay there are some libraries which is open source people they did it and you can use it easily how can i use it i can for example here there is one of the error, uh, uh, libraries called for example arrow this one called arrow okay i can install it this arrow is dealing with date and time actually if you want to use it in your program you will read how to use it and you will try you have to take experiment with it okay so i will copy for example this one if i want to install and i will come here i'll paste pip install don't forget that pip python install package this one is a tool that give you the ability to install any uh, library or module inside your ide okay so let's start it it will take some time and will, and it will install the arrow package for me when it installed it i will be able to use it to import whatever from from this library i will be able to install to use it in here in my program that was exactly what i meant by modules and libraries okay did you see how libraries make life easy for us yeah you don't need actually to build everything from scratch but you can use libraries and modules in the language okay yeah and as we said that uh, uh, modules libraries they are python uh, uh, built for someone else and ma to make our life easier and to use them uh, very quick okay and that was for today uh, for this video and thank you for watching now it will start in installing it okay so it will take some time to go to the internet and bring the files and install it okay and the same way actually if you want to uninstall it you can say pip uninstall then the same way okay error okay yes thank you for watching and see you in this video hello oh, welcome this tutorial we are going to talk about class and object Let's see exactly how we use class and object in Python. Okay, so I created this file. Inside this file, I will create class. Okay, but first, before I create a class, let me give you a brief concept about it, a brief uh, explanation about 
why we use class and why class and object are, are very, very important in, in our language. Actually, class, let's talk about, uh, let's go back and talk about variables, for example. Uh, when you use the variab variables, you use variables to store data, okay? You use the variables to store, for example, Boolean data or uh, string or integer or whatever. But in here, classes actually, but sometimes uh, one vari the variable cannot express everything or cannot store everything, okay? We need something more bigger, something uh, is, which is going to have... A, a lot of things like for example if you for example have an object like house okay and you want to describe the house the house itself has doors has windows has uh, walls ha it has a lot of things it has garden it has a lot of things so you if you want to store all this thing in one variable you cannot do it that's why we create class okay and we substantiate object from the class itself we substantiate an object from the class itself. So we take a, 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 an object from the class, okay? So let's um, make it more uh, simple and uh, let's exactly see exactly how we use class and object in Python. Uh, I have class car, I, 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 as I told you, I created this one, this file, this module1.py, okay? And inside of it, I will create a class, class car, okay? And in here, what I'm gonna do is, I will create a, a function, this function called self function or initiate function, a init function, okay? This init, init function, as we will see, as we will know, it will start our uh, program, okay? Then I will open like this. Then inside of here I have to write self, then the other things. Like for example, like what? Like let's say that the brand of the car. Okay. Brand of the car. Okay. What else? Uh, price. Uh, what else? Color. Okay. What else? Year price okay so i have brand price color and what else we have in the car brand price color and model for example M -O -D -L. okay so in here inside of this function okay what i'm going to do is i will write ta um, self okay dot for example uh, self dot type okay is equal to brand for example okay uh, so the first one brand the second one is self dot um, we can use the same price self dot price is equal to price for example okay but as I as you see here why we use self and why we use um, why we use these things actually why I write it in this, in this way self here is as we will know that self is gonna be an object like for example car 1 car 2 car 3 okay so I'm gonna substantiate object from the class itself so self will return back to what it's referring to what it's referring to the object itself so in this case actually I'll complete self dot self dot price color self dot color is equal to color okay is equal to color here you can use anything here is the um, things that you used our um, arguments that you used inside the class itself so self self dot model this is a last, last thing uh, model is equal equal to, equal to what equal to equal to model okay very nice now I created what I created the class I created a class and I will say after that I will come back here to this file and I will use 
this class. How can I use it? I will say from from module one. Okay, import import what import car the class. Okay, and as you see here, if we are not you, if we why it's dummy like this because we didn't use it yet. So once we use it, it will start to be uh, pride. So uh, here I will say car one. I will say car one. Car one is sorry. Car one. Car one is equal to is equal to what is equal to car then open. Inside of here I will do what. I will write the print or here I will write let's take a copy from this control C and I'll go back and I'll print it here control V the first one is the print right the first one is a print so I'll put the print for example to it okay okay and the price the price for example i'll put it for example thirty thousand dollar for example and the color is going to be the color is going to be white and the model the model will be for example 2022 20, for example and what i want to do in here i will print you will print what i will print car one dot for example price i want and here actually price is going back to here the price okay it's referring to this one to the price okay now i already created the class i substantiated the object object here is car one car one actually is a an object from the class itself so the class is the uh, you can say the class is the uh, father, okay, and this is the son. The object is the son, okay. So what I'm gonna do actually is um, print the price of the car. Yes, let me clear here first. Then I will run it again. Price is thirty thousand, okay. I will, for example, I want to know the type. I want to know the type okay <clears throat> car type is what is Toyota that means actually here is for example the house okay house has for example roof has a uh, garden has doors has windows okay okay and substantiate something from the house let's say for example home one home one has has what windows colors walls garden okay what is the distance of the uh, what is the dis of distance of the who what is the uh, uh, home color um how big the garden is okay all these things actually is describing the house itself okay so you can substantiate object from the class itself that was for today for this video uh, see you next video and thank you for watching Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to build a multiple choice quiz. Multiple choice quiz is a game that will give you the ability to understand a class object concept. Uh, I created two files in here. Uh, the first file is model one. This model one has a class called question and uh, it's having a function, the first the function that initiate the uh, program which is diff init and self self as we agreed that this is going to be a our object later okay when we use it and here we have two arguments like prompt and answer okay and here self the prompt is equal prompt and self the answer is equal answer this is actually uh, my class and i will drive objects out of it okay i will take objects from it so I have this class, which is having the prompt, which is question and answer, which is answer. Okay. So I created this class for two things, for questions and answer, for question and answer. And here the, my Python file, which I'm going to use to um, 
actually to create the main uh, code. In here, actually, the first thing I did, I imported the question class question from module one, which is the file name module one. So I from file name import this class. Okay. The first thing I did here is that a list. I created an object. I created a variable, and this variable contains my the question, the questions. Okay. So question number one, question number two, question number three. This is actually list of questions. Okay, with uh, choices. Okay. But as you see here, this is going to be line one. This is going to be line line two, line three, line four, because actually, as we agreed that backslash n is is writing uh, the writing new line. Okay. So these are what these are the uh, the questions. Okay. And in the end, as you as you notice here, I created an empty line in the end here because this will be the answer of the user. Okay. So this is the first thing I did. First thing is the list of question. The second th second thing I did here is another another list. Okay. This list actually I create the objects inside of it. Okay. The object number one will be the question number one. So. Object number two is going to be the, sorry, object number one is going to be the question number one and the answer. Prompt and answer as here. Class name and a prompt and answer. Uh, class name, um, uh, question number two and answer. Class name, question number three and answer. Why I did it like this? This is an index. Index zero, one, two, index zero, one, two. Question one, two, three. Okay. This is the second list I did. In here, I will create a function. This function actually, what it's gonna do is, it will do the following. It will take an argument as what? The, the list of questions. It will be an argument here, okay? Inside of this function. I will start with score zero, or the uh, player will start with score, score, uh, score zero. And in here, I will make a loop. I will iterate inside of this list and I will prompt the question and I will ask the user to enter the answer. And if answer is equal to the answer, ACA, please increase every time uh, in iteration or in loop, increase the score with one. And finally give him the final score. And here we called or we run the function okay so again our function okay this question will iterate inside of this list okay and I will make a variable called answer and I will ask the user to enter the answer but after he see the question question dot prompt I will prompt him the question number one and okay this is for iteration number one or the first loop and if the answer is equal to question dot answer if the answer equal to question dot answer okay please score plus one that increase the score with one okay and the second loop the third loop uh, until the end now let's run our program and see exactly if it's working properly or not run it yeah, it's asking me what is the color of apple. I will answer with A. Uh, here, what is the color of banana? I will answer this. I'll make it wrong, for example, B. And what is the color of strawberry? I will answer it with um, A. And let's see. It says that you got two out of three correct. That was about class and object in programming, how we use that. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about object functions. Object functions, these functions, we use it inside of the class. Okay, uh, it can or they can either modify the objects of the class. So these functions will modify the objects inside of the class or it can give specific information about those subjects or those objects. Okay, 
So we use these functions for two things, either modifying it, modifying the object inside the class or describing it. So let's go start and see how we will use it. I created here two files. File number one has the class, class car. Okay. And in here, okay, I have brand model color color and price okay this is the first function and in here actually i did or i made three ob uh, objects the object number one car one car two car three car one's class and it's actually it's utah model 22 2020 uh, sorry 2020 and white color and three thousand dollar for example the price and object two and object three okay here actually i will create a uh, i will create this function okay the object function that we talked about this function for example i will say is underscore expensive expensive okay is equal uh, sorry is expensive and in here i will write self because self is as we agreed it will be the object itself so in here inside of here i will use f if if what if self dot for example price if self if self dot price if self dot price is bigger than 2000 for example okay do what return return to return to okay else do what else return return for example false okay so i use this function inside of the class to describe the cause to get information about the object itself if it is expensive cheap it is white or black or whatever okay it's available or not available so we can use this function so i'll go back here to the application file and i will ask about for example i will print print what i will print car3 car3 and i will call the function car3 then is underscore expensive see when i wrote the uh, actually the ide itself knows when i brought the model one car the class itself the function itself uh, once i write is it, it, the ide knows that there is a function called is expensive in here i will print car3 dot is expensive so i'm asking if car3 is expensive or no and our our uh, our function is saying that if the price is bigger than twenty thousand, okay so that means it's expensive but if it's less okay it will be cheap so i will run in here i will clear this and i will run it's say pound dot car dot is expensive is okay car three dot dot is expensive let's see yeah it gives me false i have to write it in this shape so it's say sh false false why because car three is the price is one 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 thousand okay right 1000 and 1000 is less than 20,000. What about car 2? Car 2. Then run again. Ah, it's true because actually here that price is 50,000. 50,000 is bigger than greater than 20,000. 20, okay? That was a uh, object function. Thank you for watching and see you next video. Hello, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about class inheritance. 
Class inheritance, uh, let's say that you have a class, okay, and you want to create another class and you need the second class to inherit everything from the first class. So let's go start, actually, let's go and start, see what, how and why we are using class inheritance. In here, actually, I created two files, three files, actually. The first one is for the app, the second one is for class car, and the third one is for class truck. Here actually uh, the main the main class, okay, and here is the second class. Actually, I want to create a class here. I want this class to inherit everything from the first class, which, which class, class car. So in here actually what I'm going to do is I will create a class, okay, and in here inside of this class I will inherit from 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 the first class okay and but here actually if you want to inherit you have to import it you have to import it here first import import um, car from car okay and as we know that we created these three files in the same directory or in the same folder okay so import car from car and complete here actually what we, what we'll do what we are going to do is i will create a class and in here if i write car inside of, of here that means i i am telling to this class to inherit the criteria and the codes from from the first class okay and in here i will create object function okay this function is for example i will make is uh, for example is new okay this is a function and inside of here i will write self okay then f self dot f self dot what f self dot for example model because actually, if you go back here to this class, you will find that we have brand, model, color, price. But actually, I don't have this one. I remove it. Okay. So all what I need is all what I need is actually I want this class to take to inherit these things from th this class will inherit all these things from here: brand, model, color, and price. Okay. So I will go back and in here from car control S and control S control S. In here actually what I'm gonna do is um, I will class car, then this is a function actually is new. So if self that model bigger than or equal to 2020 okay print for example this is a new car okay this is a new car sorry this is a new car else okay else print For example, this is is um, old car. Okay, very good. And when I come here, I will from my, when I come here to the application, I will start create the objects. Okay, now I have two classes. The first class is the main one. The second one is inheriting from the first one. Truck is inheriting from the first one, okay? So I will create the application right now. I will create two objects. The, the object number one is, but before I create the object from car import car, sorry, I did a mistake here. From car import car. From car import car 
yes um control s this is the class and in here from car import car and down here what i'm going to do is i will create car1 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 is equal to what equal to car then here actually brand model color price brand let's say toyota this is actually the the brand brand model 2022 brand model color and price color is for example white white and in here is the price price for example let's say 20,000 okay this is the object number one here I want for example print I want to print an open car one dot for example car one dot for example price okay let's see if our program is working or not just run gives me error car dot price car one car one control s then run again it's giving me the price so let me clear oh, clear and let's run it again i'll find that it's giving me the price of the car 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 one okay that's for the first object the second object i will create the second object from the the other class okay it's gonna be truck one for example truck one and truck one is equal what truck one is equal truck is equal truck Up here let's go back class three class car class three okay okay Sorry, class truck. Yeah, exactly. This way. Control S. In here, truck one equal truck. Truck one equal truck. Then open. And I will take a copy of all of this. Control C, Control V. But let me see the Toyota, right? For example, there she is. And this will be 2020. And this, for example, would be blue. Like this. And this, for example, make it like 80,000. Okay. So truck one is equal truck. Control S. And here, control S. But I forgot to from car. Sorry from truck import import what from truck import truck okay control s and in here what i'm going to do is i want to check print print truck one print truck one dot for example is blue okay is so in here actually what happened this one truck okay inherited the everything from here okay and even if you try for example is expensive for example the other one is expensive 
and let's control s save and run it again yeah just clear control s truck one is expensive let me print again it says that pound method card dot expensive of truck dot truck object at okay goes I uh huh so let me check here actually what happened what is the error yes here guys you have to open the round brackets here control s then run again you will find that it's also take this function from here from class car so as we see now this class inherited all the uh, functions from class from this class class car okay they inherited it once you put it in here that means you will inherit i will say that this class please inherit all the functions and methods from the car uh, class okay um that was for inheritance okay what about the function that i created in the truck itself control c you can test it also control v and is new right is new let's see what it's gonna do yeah this is a new car yeah this is a new car okay or you can say also return true and return return false control s here actually if it is new the model is as newer uh, than uh, 2020 that means it's new model so return true if it's older or elder than 2020 the return false that means it's not it's not new so let's run one more time it say that the first one is car price of the first Toyota okay and what else through that here expensive yes the second one is expensive and new yes it's new okay so this is exactly how we deal with the this is exactly how we deal with the, the inheritance okay thank you for watching and see you next this video hello welcome in this tutorial we're going to talk about lambda lambda function what is lambda function lambda function is a function without a name and without indentation actually this function is very useful and let's see exactly i will show you exactly how we use it so in here i will create like for example i'll create a variable this variable is sum is equal to lambda okay and this is a function actually in here i will use two parameters or two arguments x and y okay x and y for example and i need to add x to y add x to y and in here i will print something i will print i will print sum and inside of sum i will pass the uh the arguments 10 and for example 20. now let's test run it's giving me the addition of what the addition of 10 and 20 if you want for example to change anything else to try this one it's giving me 50. this is exact exactly lambda lambda is a function without a name and without without indentation okay how can i use it also i can use it is with map function okay control forward 
let's for example create create another our see another use for lambda number i will i will create a list list of numbers like for example number one two three and four for example this is a number list and in here what i'm going to do is i need to square i want to square these numbers how can i do this this i will squared squared equal to squared is is equal to what is equal to map then inside of map what i'm going to do is i will create lambda function i will create lambda function and the parameter is x and i need this function to do what to do x multiply uh, two times square two okay to square the number this function function is going to square the number then after that i need to call the numbers okay numbers but in here i want to make it numbers it's better to be meaningful okay here actually this map it will map between these two options it will take from this list and it will give it to the function and the function will square the x okay now i want to print i want to print here print what print list okay i want to print list this is a function squared it will take from squared okay and put in a list actually list is gonna take the output of squared and it's put it's gonna print it as a list okay so clear let's run this one now as we see one two three four one become one two become four three nine because three by three is nine and four by four is 16. this is exactly lambda and how we use lambda it's really useful and it's a good function so finally lambda is what lambda is a function without name and without indentation thank you for watching and see you in the next video